Welcome to a new vlog. You've probably seen this relay that is not actually a simple relay in a previous mailbag when I received it. Well, it's not even a relay after all, but we'll talk about that in a second. If you haven't seen that video, I'll try to link it on screen right now. So this looks like an ordinary relay with some contacts, but if we take it apart, you will notice this has quite a lot of circuitry inside. We notice a ceramic uh, GPS antenna and so we start to get an idea that this is actually a, uh, a tracker device. This will take a SIM card and provide various tracking information and remote kill switch capability. So in this video I'm gonna show you how to set this up and how to control it remotely. If you are new to the channel, I recommend clicking the subscribe button as well as the notification bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Also, remember you can support the channel on Patreon where every dollar counts. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com, a professional PCB supplier who can offer 24 hours turnaround time for prototype PCBs for just $2. You also have a selection of solder mask colors with no extra cost and affordable laser cut stencils, so it's definitely worth checking them out. The first thing you'll need to do is to take the shell apart and insert a SIM card. This will take a nano SIM card and you need to provide a SIM card with both voice and data plan with no pin code request enabled. The device has a small built-in battery but that's only for backup so I suggest you connect it to a power supply while setting up for the best results. Supply positive on pin 86 and negative on pin 85. Insert the SIM card like I'm showing here and in a few seconds you should see the green and blue LEDs light up. Wait about 10 seconds for the device to get online and then we can start configuring the device. The list of commands they give you in the user manual is very short. The device is capable of much more. I've put together a list with more commands that you can use which is linked in the description below the video. And even this list is probably incomplete. The default password for these commands is 123456 and it's a good idea to change this immediately. The first command we're sending to the module is going to authorize a certain number as the admin of the module. So use your main number or phone to send admin 123456 space and your phone number. I haven't entered any country code, just the local phone number and the module should reply with admin OK, acknowledging our request. From now on, any commands sent by another number will be ignored, except for the admin commands, which will work from another number as long as you have the password. That's why it's important to change the default password. Now we can check the status of the module by sending the status command, and the module will reply with some info about the battery level, GSM and GPS connections, status of the relay switch, if it has power or not, we can check the GPS position of the module with the command G123456 and the module will reply with a Google Maps link that you can easily open. I've noticed the module has pretty good reception as I was getting a signal even indoors near a window with a bunch of trees outside. If you'd like to activate or deactivate the relay switch, you can use commands 555 for turning off and 666 for turning on and the device will acknowledge and confirm the commands. You can arm or disarm the module by issuing commands 111 and 000. From what I've noticed, these commands control whether or not the module will notify you about the different alarms. I've identified two types of alarms so far. One will trigger if there is a power loss of to, to the device, it will send an SMS letting you know power has been cut and is able to do this because of the built-in battery. The message will also contain the GPS location where this happened. The second alarm is from the built-in accelerometer because if there is no movement, the module will go into sleep, presumably to conserve power, and when movement is detected, it will trigger an alarm and send a message with the alarm event and GPS position. Besides sending the SMS, the module also has the capability to issue a voice call to the admin number in case one of these alarms is triggered, that way you will not miss the alarm. Next, if you want to take advantage of the online tracking app, you should continue by setting the access point to enable GPRS connection. For this, you'll have to check the settings for your particular operator and issue these commands. APN 123456 followed by your APN value. 
for setting the access point name. Then you can set the APN user and the APN password. Once again, I advise you to check your operator for these settings. And if we want to check the settings of the device after we've configured it, uh, we can issue the command check 123456 and the result should give us some info about the server being used for online tracking. Various instructions I found online tell you to set the tracking server with uh, this command, which I'm going to put on screen right now, and then go to uh, gpscj.com and log in to track your device. You can log in using the 10 digit code from the exterior of the relay, and the default password is 123456, which should be changed immediately. However, after setting the server and logging on their website, my device is still shown as offline and issuing the check command I've shown earlier shows the device alters the connection name and adds some text in front of which uh, this is likely the reason I'm not getting any tracking data pushed to the server. And I know what you're thinking, maybe they have a cluster of servers and they just randomize the one you're actually pinging with that string, but if we check by pinging d.gpscj.com we get a reply meaning the server is actually alive and if we ping s30d.gpscj.com we get no reply meaning that server is not alive. I've also tried setting the IP address of the server instead of the domain name but that doesn't solve the problem, the device will not connect to the server either way. I see users leaving feedback on AliExpress and Banggood that they are successfully tracking their device on the website so it might be an issue on my end after all, let me know in the comments if you've had better luck. Some of you might be curious on uh, the electronics inside this tracker if any are hiding behind this uh, cube construction. So let's do a teardown. We notice on top we have the ceramic antenna. Uh, this is for the GPS. And on the sides we have uh, another antenna. This is likely for the GSM modem. I'm gonna try pulling on the GPS antenna because it kind of looks like it's uh, somehow glued and let's hope I'm not going to destroy it. Okay, so this is the uh, GPS antenna disconnected. I can see a uh, small LiPo battery in there and uh, what looks like a uh, plastic frame on which the GSM antenna is glued. This has to be one of the smallest uh, LiPo batteries that I have ever seen. It's like less than one squared centimeter. Looks like we have a couple of screws down here that hold it together. Now we can pull this apart from the base of the relay. And I must say it's a really nice construction. I really like how they uh, how the engineers thought about assembling this uh, system. So the bottom board has the uh, relay terminals on one side and a couple of uh, MOSFETs on the other side plus maybe a small transistor for turning those on or off. So like I said in the beginning this is not actually a relay but rather using some MOSFETs for switching uh, the uh, positive line going to the fuel pump. Uh, on this uh, sideboard we have a DC to DC converter which is likely stepping down the uh, voltage uh, for the uh, GSM and GPS modem. On the GSM modem side we have this uh, shielded module. There's nothing to see in here, no serial numbers, no markings on this shield at all. Uh, it's just the minimal supporting circuitry, maybe some uh, linear regulators, uh, a few transistors and the SIM card slot. This is one of the smallest LiPo batteries I've seen. Uh, it's probably less than one squared centimeter and I don't think this can hold more than 30 or 40 milliamp hours. But that's probably enough for this module to be able to send an alarm SMS. Uh, after the power has been cut. I also like how they use one of these uh, uh, stick-on antennas and uh, it's just uh, glued to this plastic cube that they uh, use for the assembly of the device. 
A big concern for these trackers is uh, how much power do they use and I've measured this one and it takes between 20 and 50 milliamps while active uh, sending or receiving messages but after a couple of minutes of inactivity it will go to sleep and it will take only 5 milliamps which is pretty safe for having it connected to your car battery. I really like how they've designed this to take so little power by going into sleep. I've purchased this for $14 from Banggood and even though I don't have the online tracking functionality working, I somehow feel like this is worth $14 just for the regular GSM tracking functionality that I uh, got working via SMS. I am in contact with Banggood customer service, hopefully they can help me to get the online tracking working. If not, I think I'm gonna ask them to send another one of these because uh, I really like it and would like to install one of these. If you're getting one, I would recommend checking it upon arrival to make sure everything is working and uh, uh, the model is functioning correctly. I've also found this open source project that allows you to create your own tracking server and you can then use whatever tracker you want and just point it to the IP address of your server and start collecting data. So maybe I'll do a video on that subject if you guys are interested. Until then, thank you for watching, let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you next time with a new video.